you know, all of us are impacted by Lake Superior in some way, inspires us. Um, and that's kind of what's happening here with Karen, the visual artist, and Laura, the ballet choreographer. So I'll let them talk about their collaboration, how the work came about, how the ballet came about. Um, I'm Karen Asley Meese. Uh, these are my paintings. I've been influenced by Lake Superior for about 20 years. I did some more abstracted horizon paintings before this body of work. I've been working on these since July of 2015. And, um, excuse me, come on in. Um, and this, as I build up the body of work, I, I was just, I kept playing with the motion of the waves and a year and a half ago, Laura and I were at dinner, and I just said I would really love to have somebody else interpret my work as a dancer. She was talking about her work, and, and I was just thinking that it, their motion is so beautiful and fluid, it would be a natural fit. And then for a while, I don't know, it was two or three months later, you, I saw you going in your house, and you said you were thinking about that or something. And so, um, and then she applied for an ARAC grant and received it. And um, I'll just, what I like, what was really amazing to me was when she came over to my studio, it felt like in about, I don't know, three minutes, she had 90% of her dance figured out. And when you talk about, um, this was the first painting that was full the size of this. And then uh, I have three smaller versions of these, of one of which is there. And I, we just started talking, and then she said, I don't know, how did it become a day in the life of the lake, kind of? And I think we were starting to discuss what paintings would work. Um, and when I went over to her studio and just looked at all of her body of work, um, there was her, I, can I call it your flagship? Yeah, is it my flagship? Um, yeah. Kind of her flagship piece that um, she was really interested in using. And then looking at all of the other ones really just um, allowed us to just talk about which ones might work. And I wanted, as a choreographer, I look for a story to tell. And so when I was looking at her paintings, I think in the back of my mind, trying to think what type of story we could tell with all of the different paintings. And so um, these ones stood out to me as very different and kind of stood out to me in kind of their, their sequencing, I guess you could say. So this one, um, we started with just throwing out different words and trying to figure out how and what this might look like. So this was kind of Dawn. Um, this one had a lot of strength to me, and kind of that midday, the big arcing wave. Um, so strength, and then more of an evening, and then kind of to finish off the day. Um, so that's how it started. The piece didn't end up being in that kind of the day cycling through. It, kind of morphed into something a little bit different. Um, but So that's how they were chosen, I guess. So when I went to the first rehearsal that you invited me to, you were working on um, this piece, I think Charles the Dancer and um, I don't know, Sarah, you, you were working on this, but it was where you were lifting her up and then kind of letting her free fall. But I knew it was that just from, I could tell, you know, and then I could tell that you were doing the little, when they were running back and forth, and I found that fascinating that with just such a little amount of information of your dance, I could tell which painting it was, so can you talk about how you, how'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, well, I don't know if I can succinctly tell you exactly how I did that, but I think a lot of it started with the paintings themselves and then really interpreting the music or finding the music that matched each individual painting. So that was the first piece of the puzzle to me after deciding which paintings to use. Once, um, so maybe can I tell that story first? Sure. So Karen put these upstairs in her open 
space upstairs. And one afternoon, I just sat with headphones and flipped through all of the music that I was kind of inspired by to begin with, that I had an idea of that sounded like a little bit like waves. So I just sat and I just listened and looked at the paintings and tried to find which ones really spoke to me um, as it related to each individual piece. So with the music, then I got into the studio and started working um, also at home, thinking about it in my head, kind of what I was picturing, how I was envisioning it, um, and then looking at the painting, kind of thinking about Ballet is, I've been a dancer since I was five years old, and so ballet is kind of a second language for me. So the choreography itself came pretty naturally, um, and the movement, when I just put myself, I wanted it to be very organic movement and very flowing, and so I just had all of these concepts in my mind, and then once I started actually moving um, and visualizing it, the paintings, the steps came. So, that answers. And can you, there's some of the dancers in here. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah. You referred to the puzzle. Yes. What, what's the puzzle? Well, I think pie piecing all of the parts together. So Karen's artwork, she has all of these, you know, very wonderful pieces of work. Um, and then the story, you know, she has her own story to tell. I had my own vision and my own story in addition. So I think all of those, the music, the dancers, um, and then the performance itself, the costumes, there's all sorts of different pieces that have to come together to make up the end product. And that's what was, most artists, visual artists, you work, work, work in after the show, but here I felt like I could hand it off and it was in really good hands. And especially after the first rehearsals, like, you know, I needed not worry anymore. And then the professionalism was, it just, it was just a fun ride for me to watch it. And um, mm -hmm. so that was, it was just amazing. And I want, um, if any of the dancers care to answer how Laura would talk, I mean, could you tell me how, okay, how did you tell them to make that, you know, or I don't know, some of the, you know, this part where they all kind of pile on one another. Um, so did you say, okay, see that, I want you to do, do that with your bodies, or is it, I think I mostly gave them specific. There were a few spots where I let them improvise a little bit. Um, Sarah White in particular, I allowed her to come up with some of the movement on her own to get them off of her in that second, or in that piece. Um, but mostly I gave them movements to do. Some of the lifts were altered or I'd say this is what I'm going for, how can you do that? And maybe Charles. Charles is the lead male dancer on that and um Yeah, so I guess that's kind of more or less how it, it happened. Um just it within this talk I find it fascinating as to like when you see different parts of the waves as a dancer because like uh, like uh we were kind of given this choreography and kind of figure out what Laura has, like, this is kind of what I want here, these are the steps, we kind of put it together the best that we can to make it fit and work, uh, what her vision is too, and then it's like interesting to hear when you see your pictures in different parts, which I know Laura is also going for, but it's also semi-ambiguous, mm -hmm. and it's interesting to, like, as a dancer, like, these are, this is what we're doing, this is what we've been told to do, this is what we're putting into it, and this is what you're seeing out of that. Yeah, because it goes from I, 3D to I flatten it out, I don't want to say kill it, but I flatten it, then Laura re-enlivens it, and then you, you know, here, and then you put it back into 3D. Right. So. Yeah, it's a really unique um, process, and mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. It's something that I've never had the opportunity to do, to take somebody else's work and reimagine it and 
put it back on the stage. It was so. fun. Yeah. How did you guys think it came off? You know, when it was on the stage, you know, was there any issues on showing the paintings with the dancers or? Mainly we just wanted the high enough. Originally we talked about, what do you call it, rear projection. Um, I didn't want shadows. I didn't want it, you know, I didn't want the wave paintings on the dancers was my main concern. And other than that, um, you guys had played around with it, and by the time I got there, it was just leveling it a little. It's the only thing that I had a concern with, and mm -hmm. that got fixed. So. And for people that maybe didn't see the ballet, how was it? Were the images? All they were big. They were about 40 feet big on the stage, and they were what 12 feet, probably. They were higher than you could reach Sarah up over your head. So they were 12 feet above, you know, behind them. And as her choreography, it started out with kind of in sequence, and then she would reference back. So it went through these three, and then back again through those two. And then, didn't you even? Yep, that, and then. Yeah, this is kind of the resolution because it kind of got dark there for a little bit, mm -hmm. figuratively and literally. And uh, so, did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. uh, but it was big, and that's another thing is when I first envisioned doing these paintings back in July of 20. I just remember it. It was one of those profound moments for me as an artist where the lake and the waves and the light were perfect and the wind. And I just sat down and on my butt and started taking pictures of my cell phone thinking, you got to fix this, you got to nail this. And But originally, I was wanting them to be at least 20 feet long, the paintings of uh, whatever proportion. Um, so to be able to see them really, really big, it's like, ooh, yeah, I want to do that now in real life. Um, <laughs> uh, where I get to do that, a uh, 40-foot painting is pretty ambitious. But um, anyway. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Yeah. I don't have a question, maybe so much as a comment. Um, it was like watching the performance with this done, I wanted it to start over right away. Because it was, Me a, way too. <laughs> it was a way more challenging experience mm -hmm. to be managing the visual artist in conversation with the dance that was happening. And then for me, there was this funny piece is I think of looking down towards the lake. Mm -hmm. And here, in, from the audience, I'm looking up towards the lake. So, um, but really, the power of trying to be taking in both both mediums at the same time, and they mm -hmm. were in conversation with each other, mm -hmm. was a really demanding visual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's interesting. You say looking down because that's what people keep commenting on my work and. I am setting very low, and I, if you notice, all of this work, none of, there's no sky, there's no beach. Yeah. It's, um, I want these to be seen as portraits, for lack of a better term, and these are individual entities that I'm dealing with, and I don't want anything else. It, it's about this particular wave, and or that particular situation. So it's, I like that you notice I mean, well, I guess you were looking at it, but anyway, uh, just a thought. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes? It's a two-part question, one for you and one for you. Okay. Are these paintings directly representative of the photographs? Yeah, enough. They are not exactly the color, but if you get up close, I, okay, so I take an image that's this big of a wave, and then of which, say, this painting, you know, the actual photo may be as big as this wall or as wide as this wall. And I get my little viewfinder in Photoshop or whatever you call it, the crop tool, and I find the composition that pleases me the most. Then, so I, because these are panels that only come in certain sizes, you know, proportions, I, this is a one to two proportion. So I do the one to two thing and I, crop it, and then I print that out, and I grid it, and then there's a grid on all of these. And so it's important to me that if I gave you a stack of these photos, you could pick out which image, because I really think of that as an entity, or 
a very particular situation in time. And uh, and the photo, did I answer your question? Okay. So <laughs> the follow up to that is, if these were photographs and not paintings, would you have responded to them the same way? Oh, excellent question. Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, well, I think there might have it. That's a, that's a, I should think about that for a minute. I think that's a challenging question to answer because I don't know. But I do think that the the size of these and the texture of them is definitely more um, gripping and wanting to do something with than just a photograph. Um, I wonder if that has anything to do with like you're not painting these in like a typical way with like a paintbrush, right? Right. I and paint there's certain them. energy that goes into that. I wonder if you talk about that a little bit. Well, I paint these with um, their glazes, layers and layers of glazes. So if you see this color here may have seven or eight layers on it. Um, I I don't mix the color. I kind of mix the color on the palette. I use this thing where it's really thin down, and I have a rag on the end of my finger with a glove. And so I'll paint that. And then I have kind of a visual language of where it's really dark, there will always be, or mostly always will be uh, vertical lines. And I set in the darks. And um, if you look at this, they're an abstract painting, you know, this close. I, I'm painting abstractly. Um, I want, if you pull away, they become more realistic, but as you get closer, the, the mark making is more abstract mm -hmm. or more gestural. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's probably what you're responding mm -hmm. to. But, you know, I scratch it back off. There is no white paint on any of these. I use the white. If you don't know what gesso is, it's just a really high quality white ground that you paint on, and it's kind of slick. and. So I'll put these glaze on, and then I'll polish it back off to get the, the luminosity. But glazing is a very, very old technique in painting I mean, from the 1400s, and it, it builds up a luminosity. And yes? Um, from Laura, so your process, you do a lot of choreography, and this is a very different sort of start. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, how things change for you in the choreographic process with starting with a different idea, like starting from a painting as opposed to starting mm -hmm. with a song or something like that? Mm -hmm. um, I think this just, it gave me more maybe language or more, you know, when I would look at a painting and Karen would talk about the white and kind of, she would do the, kept doing this motion mm -hmm. of the waves coming onto shore. And so that gave me kind of a vocabulary of dance steps. So I started with that and thinking about, all right, what type of movement can I get that will make the dancers move in that type of way to symbolize those waves. So it, I guess I started with a vocabulary already that was a little bit predetermined, I'll, even though I, I mean, it's still my own vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Different accent on vocabulary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here you go. I have a question um, for both of you, kind of. Uh, there's a lot of words like about communication that keep coming up, like language, vocabulary, like you just used. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what concerns you had going into the project together um, about communication you may have had, and maybe some. What are the what were the challenges? Um, in communication there because you are speaking such different like artistic languages. I didn't have any fear that you would mess it up or anything. <laughs> 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 um, and then after I went, well, she came, the, it was probably the same day you said you went upstairs and she was talking about this painting. Um, and, you know, has kind of, everybody calls out a scary painting and, um, I don't know, she just, she, I could tell that she was getting the emotion that I hoped I was conveying or depicting. So after that, I had no fear. It was just, I, you know, I, the technical thing, could it be projected brightly enough that it didn't look like this muddy thing? And just technical stuff, but that was all, I had no fear after not very long, so it was just fun after that. I think I might have been a little more nervous 
um, <laughs> to do her, her to um, choreograph something that would do her paintings justice um, and that she would be happy with them um, and happy it's with the end, end product. I, but I think we we talked to, we had a lot of communication going throughout the whole process and kind of checking in. Um, I invited Karen to a couple of rehearsals and really Karen was great at saying this is your your deal, you're interpreting it. Um, so I, I started crying at the first one, she nailed it so well. <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of like trying not to look whatever, but Karen, can you say what it was she had? Um, well, like this thing, so, you know, that was, I mean, I said I don't paint the beach. Technically, this is, you know, really shallow water, but it's still water. It's not just stones. But just the the motion, and I'm not at all a dancer. Some dancer can, uh, you know, he would do this thing that was so elegant, and um, just the timing, there's a one part, there will be video of this eventually, but where I just call it piling on the, the main female dancer. And you know, she goes, and then um, there was just, it just worked. If I felt like she was conveying in another form, she was translating my work to dance. And did that answer your question? I, I'm just interested in your thinking, of each of you, your thinking on this, because I didn't see the performance, and I have lots of questions about scale and abstraction, uh -huh. and, and whether you were whether you're responding to these pieces or you're responding to the pieces that big, or you're responding to the idea of water and it just happened to be layered on this. I think, and well, for me to answer that question, I think there are so many layers. It's not just one thing. So I didn't just look at like this one wave and say, okay, I'm going to try to nail that wave. I think it was the big picture itself. Um, for those of you who did see the piece, um, you know, I really tried to create some sort of a story um, a little bit. And so there were many different levels, the large big picture, but then also the mood of each one individually, and then the waves, the specific details. So I'd say, yeah, on multiple levels for me. I have, I have one observation and one question. Um, watching the piece, what I was really struck by because it was just a week after we had that horrendous storm mm -hmm. and that one section in the mm -hmm. dance where it was just like the power of the waves. It was just really, to me, kind of brought back what had just happened mm -hmm. um, with the lake. And I thought that was really fascinating. But the other question is, how did you come up with the title? <laughs> ah. Ah. Yeah, I think somebody was going to ask oh, that. Okay. So the title is curl, uncurl, and dot, dot, dot. So I threw around, and I'm, I much prefer to speak on through dance. I'm not a public speaker, and I'm not a writer, and so coming up with like the title was really challenging for me. I think it took me a long time and a lot of brainstorming. Um, I going kept over. Like, we need, I got <coughs> three emails like, we need this, we need this. Um, and so I wanted, I mean, the, the words curl, you know, are very symbolic of a wave and all of the curls that take place. But then also, there are times in the piece where there's an uncurling, um, and you can take that meaning to be so many other things as well, um, curling and uncurling just in life in general. So kind of taking it away from the waves and more, I don't know what the word is, holistically speaking. And then I had a lot of words that I was thinking of putting at the end of that, curl, uncurl, and, but if you saw the piece, it also leaves you mm -hmm. wanting more, and it leaves you without a succinct ending, and so it's unfinished, um, and that's how waves are as well. They never stop moving. They're continuous, and um, so, 
have a couple of questions. One is, um, how long was the piece? I was unable to make it. Mm -hmm. um, how long was the piece overall? It was stage? seven minutes. And then, will there be a repeat performance anywhere? Or is there a video function? Robert? <laughs> <laughs> It was a, a big thing for us to mount, and it was because Laura got the grant from the Arrow and Regional Arts Council to do so. Um, yes, I would, I would love to do it again. We have to be able to financially do it again and do it justice. Buy tickets. <laughs> so yeah, and that's a big piece of it. Projection, in order to project these images, from as far away as we did, you can't just use a common projector. There are very fancy, expensive projectors that need to be rented to be used, um, which is why the AREC grant was so crucial to this project um, and important. Laura got the grant. Yeah. We just yeah. used it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I, so I don't know. I was asked by three separate people who I didn't know if we were going to do another collaboration, so that has to be a good thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want more. So. Yes. I've got a question. What, uh, as I watched you, I got to see it twice, which is great, you know, uh, and I, I thought, kind of on the back of Jackie's kind of comment here, it was like, Ooh, you have to be an active participant, uh -huh. you know, uh, to get that because there's a lot of, um, it was, I guess there wasn't a central at times, like a, just a central, this is what's happening. And I, I want to ask you about um, really, when you do something like that, what are your expectations of the audience to be able to take that in? So, yeah. Well, I think as an audience member, you're going to be drawn to different parts of the piece as well. And so it's not necessarily required to be able to comprehend everything that's going on. The great thing about producing art is that everybody in this room is going to interpret it differently. And that's the same with the visual, such as dance. And so if your eye goes to the lips, um, while you know simultaneously there are other dancers kind of keeping that rhythm going, then that's what you're experiencing. Um, and so I think it's also what's great about being able to see a performance more than once, because every time you see it, you'll see something different. And so I think that it can be overwhelming, but at the same time, um, you just, it is what it is, and you get to experience for what that is. And I would say the same could be said about looking at a set of paintings almost. You know, different, what part do you look at or how do you look at, or how do you look at multiple paintings and people are gonna address that differently, have different experiences, and if you come to an exhibition twice, it's probably gonna look different for the exact same reason. And it was something that I was cognizant of as well from the start kind of thinking about how are, how is the audience going to take in. Um, I wanted the piece to go up first so you could see it and experience it a little bit, even though it was maybe a second. I mean, it wasn't that much ahead of time. But And then um, seeing the dancers start more slowly and become more involved. Also, with a lot of these waves, you know, a lot is happening in the painting, and I wanted to portray that as well. Um, there was one part I was fortunate enough to see the piece up in Silver Bay on stage, and after seeing that on stage, I changed a little bit of it because I felt like it was too busy, um, and so I kind of dialed back one section a little bit. So. One thing I'd like to add is Robert you, well, you put your choreography of the Rite of Spring, and it was just kind of a brilliant bookends of these natural forces. Uh, I don't know if you know about the Rite of Spring, but it's wild. And um, you know, it caused a riot in its first, yeah. Google it, and it's pretty fascinating. But um, 
it, they both seem like really challenging dances. Were they more challenging than some? I mean, physically, you've been a lot in both of them, kind of. And um, so I just was, I thought that seemed like a good, I'm not a dancer, you can tell, but um, <laughs> it seemed like a good bookends for the evening. I'm glad you thought that. <laughs> <laughs> programming on the spot, programming yeah. a, a, a multi repertoire uh, yeah. performance is, is is challenging as well, you know, artistically, and uh, I that's what I felt, you know. I mean, two natural forces at either end of the performance with with beautiful pieces in, in, in you know interspersed uh -huh. with that, each with its different emotions. So I think it, it took you on a, a really great. Trip, a really great ride, and I think was very, uh, for me as a director and, and uh, artistic director, to start with this piece was was the perfect thing to take to start the, the journey with with this work and your work. So. How did the costumes come about? Uh, so the costumes, it's an interesting story. In my mind, <laughs> I had something very different. It visioned in my mind. I was really looking for um, a longer skirt that when their legs would go up would really arc and kind of be the waves. And I just wasn't finding that. And so I had to let that go. And the minute I let that kind of vision in my mind go, um, I came across these um, kind of short unitards that were the perfect color. They were kind of a watercolor effect. And so um, I ordered them because I wanted to see what they would look like, got them on, um, put them up next to her paintings to see because that was the other challenge. Uh, talking about the visual nature of the piece already, I didn't want costumes to get in the way of that um, and be another kind of um, entity. So they complemented the colors really well. Um, and then, so that was for the women. And then we had the tights dyed. We kind of went through a couple of variations on the, for the men's costumes and ended up, um, I think the final decision was made that week <laughs> that the men were going to be in the tights. That and it was gradated. It was really dark blue, kind of this blue for the men, and it kind of got nude, and then vice versa for the women, so. Well, they disappeared. Yeah. Well. <coughs> okay. So Great. when you mount you. it again, <laughs> yeah. show it twice, back to back. I <laughs> <laughs> the dancers would like it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize, I mean, I know how athletic, but I didn't realize when you run backstage, there's the big thing of water and all the bananas. And Joe used to ride in, you know, whatever, and um, bike rides. And it looked like a bike ride table with all the food <laughs> to refuel the dancers. And and then they're, you're breathing so hard. Yes, you're, you're, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So they might have to have a second staff or, you know. But, Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. How are you? Good to see you. 